Hey guys, um, in this one, this is going to be part three of the little checkpoint save game series thing that I seem to have going on. Um, in the first one, we created a little checkpoint blueprint um, that you can put out in the world and it'll save your transform. And then when you load into the game, um, your transform will be set to the last checkpoint that you overlapped. And we also invented a little pop-up, just as you can see down there in the bottom right. Um, it'll tell you when you've saved your game, whenever you walk over one of these things. Just like that. Today what we're going to make is I'm just going to show you um, how to create a quick little actor that can delete your save data so that you can erase your checkpoint if you ever need to. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to make a quick little fall volume that when you touch it, it'll just kill the player and you'll go back to your last checkpoint. So you can use that to make a little um, platforming game if you wanted to. So first things first, I'm just going to close down all of this up here. That was left open from the last tutorial. Um, first thing is we'll just create a checkpoint erasing volume. So go into your content browser, go to blueprint class, um, type actor, and we'll call this um, checkpoint eraser, like that. Add component, type in collision, go sphere collision, just call that overlap. Um, make that about 250 size, just like that. Um, Let's untick hidden in game for now, just like that. Um, and we might also go add component and add a little billboard to it. Um, and that billboard can just be this little lizard dude, that's fine. And just drag him up a bit and maybe scale him to like 2.5 so he's a bit bigger. Um, now, this make him uh, not hidden in game either, like that. Now, this is just for your purposes so that when you're testing your game, you can erase your checkpoint. Um, and then you can see how your game's saving and all of that. So that'll appear there like that. And then when you overlap it, we're going to have it erase the checkpoint and then restart the game. So it's just a helpful little reset actor. Okay, so if we delete all of this really quick, um, click on overlap, right click, and then say begin overlap. If I can spell, add on component, begin overlap. Over other actor, cast to third person character from other actor. So it'll only detonate or trigger when we overlap with the third person character and then what we're going to do is we're going to say delete delete game in slot like that um, and I believe the slot name was called checkpoint so let's just type that in checkpoint and then we might just add a little print string off of here and then in that we're just going to say save game deleted actually no you know what I'm going to show you something really cool. So if we go back to the um, save game pop-up, um, we have this little save notification um, thing up above here like this. Um, what we can also do is if we move all of this across like that, go back to designer and see this text here, we can actually set that text to whatever we want whenever we call this pop-up. So rather than just being a game save pop-up, this could be a whole generic um, pop-up widget. So if we go up here to text block and we'll just call that um, pop-up text like that and we have to click is variable compile and save just like that and then go into graph and then if we drag pop-up text over here into this like that and say set text like that hook that up like this and like this and then if you drag in text to the event like that and then we can call this um, text to display now whenever we call this event, we can give it custom text. So if we go back into our um, checkpoint BP, like this, we had a little event here where we displayed a save notification. So we can call that uh, game saved, like that. And let's just check that that works, make sure we didn't break anything. Game saved, beautiful. Game saved, okay. So now if we go back into our checkpoint eraser, we just deleted the game from the slot. But now what we could also do is let's just go back into our checkpoint BP, copy all of this just here, um, and then paste that in here like this. Now instead of saying saved game, we'll say, or game saved, we could say game deleted, just like that. And now if we go play, and then that says game saved because we're on the checkpoint. If we walk into the deleting box, game deleted. 
boom, and now our checkpoint should be gone. So if we press escape and then hit play, we spawn back in the center of the map. And then if I walk over this, game saved, close, play, we start back in that checkpoint again. Okay, so that's the little fancy deleting thing. That can delete your checkpoint, so that's done. We can just close that, close the save game pop-up for now, close the checkpoint blueprint as well. Um, what was I going to make next? I was going to make a falling volume, wasn't I? Okay, so to do that, just right-click in your content browser, go new blueprint class of actor, and we might just call this full volume BP. And the idea is that whenever your player overlaps this, they're going to respawn at the last checkpoint. So add component, type in collision. We'll make this a box collision. Um... Yeah, we'll make it a box collision. Okay, and we're going to call this overlap, compile and save. Now, go to your construction script. Um, if we drag in our overlap like that and we say set extent, and then hook that up like that, and then drag off inbox extent and promote that to a variable, and just call that box extent, I guess, and then make that public. Now, the reason that I did this, and give it some defaults of like um, 100, 100, and 100, compile and save. Now, the reason that I did this is because this overlap volume is going to be the volume that triggers the level to restart. So if we put that in here like this, what we can actually do is just change these values down like this, and we can change the volume of the box. Um, we can duplicate it, and this one can be different from the other one, and it lets us quickly make customizable, essentially, death volumes that will restart the game. Um, beautiful. So we've got that. We might just add a billboard to this as well so we can see them a bit easier and click on them a bit easier. Um, and instead of using the lizard this time, let's just pick... It can literally just be whatever. How about this one, this little circular thing? Um, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just so that you've got a visual representation of um, what's what in your game. So I know that the lizard is my full volume. I know that this thing is my... Sorry, my lizard's my erasing volume. And this circle... The, bubble thing is the um, full volume. So that's cool. And it makes it easier to click on it as well. Instead of trying to click on that line down the side and trying to actually select the volume itself, which is really hard, you can just click the, bill the billboard. Um, okay, so now we've got that. Now we just need to add the functionality for when you overlap it. So we can delete all of this, click on overlap, then right click, add event, collision, begin overlap, um, cast a third person character, and if it overlaps the player, um, I guess what we could do is we'll just say spawn sound just to let the player know that they fucked up. <laughs> um, have I got any depressing sounds in here? <laughs> yeah, sure, that'll do. <laughs> I'll give you a link to that in the Dropbox as well. Um, so we spawn the sound and maybe we'll delay. Actually, no, we can make the um, screen go black or something. So yeah, no, we'll have a delay. We'll just put the delay. Um, maybe that can be just like two seconds like that. And then after those two seconds, we're going to say get current level name. And then we're going to say open level. And the level name that we're going to open is just the current level. So we're basically just restarting the level. So player overlaps the volume. We get a nasty sound. Um, in a second, we might make the screen just turn black there, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We'll wait two seconds to let the sound sink in, and then um, we'll reopen the level. And if we've saved a checkpoint, we'll automatically go back to the last checkpoint that we were at. So to test this out, let's put this volume um, over here like this, and we're going to make it a little bit lower than the um, platforms here. So just change the Z a little bit, just like that, and then make it nice and wide. Just like that. So the idea is that like you might have a platforming challenge over here. Um, actually, I'll just show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this wall. We're going to delete that wall like that. We'll alt-drag this guy out like this. Actually, you know what? We won't even do that. Let's just have this little block here, and we'll just alt-drag him out like this. And basically, these are going to be your platforms. Um, we're going to change the scale of the Z up like that so that it actually looks like a platform. And this is going to be your platforming challenge to get across all of these like this. And then we're going to have a big one out here. 
Um, so grab the red and the green like that. And we're going to have a big one out here and that's where your finish is going to be. And this volume, this full volume, is the way we're going to set this up, is we're going to put this in the middle like this. Or maybe we'll just put it over the edge. And then we're going to drag that down nice and low. Um, go into your default and make this nice and big like this. So now whenever the player falls off the edge and goes through that volume, the level's going to restart. Okay, so we go play. Game saved. We're running around up here. Here's our platforming challenge. Pro, pro, pro. Alright, now let's get to the end. I just want to show you how good I am. Yo, okay. Now if we fall off the edge. <laughs> there we go. Back to the start, wherever the last checkpoint was. So if we get this checkpoint and then fall off. <laughs> and then we're back. <laughs> Alright, I'll just show you how to make the screen go black real quick. Um, so we'll just go user interface, new widget blueprint, and we'll call this fade to black. Um, go up to your palette, add border, drag that into the canvas panel. Um, anchor the border to the whole thing, like that, and then change the offset to zero and zero, so that takes up the entire screen. Um, change the brush color to black, it could be white, it could be whatever you want. Compile, save, um, add an animation, call this fade in, is what we're going to call it. Add a track to the border, um, click plus track, and we're going to change the render opacity. Um, at zero seconds, we'll have it zero. At one second, we'll set the opacity to one, just like that. Now, in the graph, delete all of this, grab our fade in animation, type in play animation, add a custom event called fade to black, just like that. Um, and this was fade in, wasn't it? So it went from zero opacity to one opacity. So that'll fade in. Um, and that's it, I believe. That's all we want. So we can close that down. Now, in our full volume BP, um, let's change the time of this to three seconds to really let it sink into the play that they really, they're dead. Now, if we go create widget, um, and that's going to be of fade to black, we're going to call the fade to black event so that the animation actually plays. And then we're going to say add to viewport and hook all of that up just like that. Compile, save. Now if we go back in and, alright, a game saved because we're on our checkpoint. We jump off the edge. Beautiful. Restart. We're back to the start. Alright, um, that's it for this one, guys. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to do. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, this works pretty well. Like I'm pretty happy with this. Beautiful. Um, again, I'll give you all the links to any files that I used in the description. It'll just be in a Dropbox folder, so you click on that, um, download the files inside. The sounds will be WAV files, so just drop them into your content folder and import them and they should be sweet. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you want to know... So this, this is part three. We've got the checkpoints, we've got the... Um, the notification, we've got the full volume. If you want to know how to make some cool um, platforms that actually like, instead of just sitting here like this, they can like move up and down and they can move left and right while you're playing. Um, I have another video called Randomized Moving Platforms or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But in that, I'll show you how to make a couple of cool moving platforms that you could use to make a platforming game. Basically, this is everything you need for a platforming game. Like, You've got the checkpoints, you put in a couple of platforms, um, your goal is to just get to the end over here, and then when you get to the end, perhaps you could just have another blueprint that just opens another level. Like, that's easy enough, like, I'll just show you how to do that now. Go blueprint class, type actor, just call this, um, level end, like that. Just give it a collision. So say it's a sphere collision, um, just what we've basically been doing this whole time. Set that to like 250 or something. We'll just make that um, visible in game just because I can't be bothered making it look pretty. Um, delete all of this off of sphere, right click, add event, begin overlap, 
cast a third person character it's the same same thing that we've done a thousand times and then all you just do is you just say open level and the level name you can drag off of this and promote to a variable and just call this level to open make that public um, done right and then all you do is you just drag your level end in here and then when your player reaches this um, you just type in the level to open so it could be level 2 and then what you do is you create a new map default um, we'll save the one that we've got right now um, we'll save this new untitled map and what we're just gonna call that um, where are our maps do we have a maps folder here somewhere third person BP maps okay and then in here we just call this level 2 like that now if we go back to our first map third person example map um, play so, all right, so we just spawned into our level there's all the checkpoints and all of that now we're jumping across these oh fucking hell <laughs> just as I'm trying to finish up the level I would miss the platform I swear to god if I oh no okay <laughs> oh man this is actually hard all right so we're here and now when we walk in this just give it a second level two Oh, and see that we actually spawned at the um the checkpoint transform saved from the last one so we don't want that good thing that I did this because now we can fix that up but it opened the level successfully so that's basically your level end and I mean you could add in a little fancy like static mesh or something or a particle system maybe maybe you could add a particle system to it to make it look really pretty so what have we got here um, steam lit cool so that's that's the end it's wherever the steam is and you could add a pretty light and a rotating static mesh to it if you wanted but that's the end anyway so I need to show you how to clear the checkpoint so when you overlap with this um, the level end before you open the level like that all that you do is the same thing that we did for the um, eraser thing you just say delete game in slot and then you delete the checkpoint and then you open the level and you'll spawn at the player start in the new level um, easy as that so let's just give this a test all right game saved oh man I'm gonna screw this up oh god oh no come on oh thank god okay in we go boom straight in the middle of level two so now we're at the next level all right that's it guys let me know if you have any questions let me know if you enjoyed this um, like I said, there's a tutorial about how to make some cool moving platforms on my channel in another video. Um, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.